The cell can be thought of as a big state machine. When you take the chemical specifics out of the description of the system, you are left with a mathematical object, and many principles from other areas of engineering can be applied to those models. Two terms that pertain to models of this type are orthogonality and equivalence. In synthetic biology, the term orthogonality is used fairly loosely. In areas of computer science and electrical engineering, these terms have a more technical meaning. This chapter of a book by Sanjit Sesha, available online, describes this term equivalence in the context of embedded systems. These are the control systems and things like traffic lights. If you want to go deeper into the relationships between genetic engineering and electrical engineering, it's an interesting read accessible with little prerequisite knowledge. It deals with the ability to say with confidence that one model of a state machine can be used in place of another. In this way, it deals with the same situation in which we would consider swapping out one set of interacting genes with another. Orthogonality is a term often used in the context of synthetic biology, but in many distinct biochemical contexts. To explain what is meant by it, let's look at an example. During translation, aminoacyl tRNA synthetases react an amino acid with ATP and then join it to the 3' prime end of a tRNA. The tRNAs and synthetases are referred to as being orthogonal to one another. What is meant by this statement is that the synthetases only react with their preferred amino acids and tRNAs. From a chemical perspective, this means that the substrate range of the synthetases combined with the specific set of tRNA sequences in the cell leads to a situation in which no cross-reactions occur. In this system, where orthogonality most comes into play is when we try to add another synthetase to the cell or replace one of the endogenous ones with a different version. For example, suppose we try to knock out the phenylalanine synthetase in E. coli and replace it with the copy from B. subtilis. Because the sequence of tRNAs and synthetases in other organisms are slightly different, one cannot be sure that these molecules will still be orthogonal in their new context. Sure, these genes are all highly similar to one another, but it turns out that their specificity drifts slightly over time. It is not uncommon in these sorts of experiments for the replacement synthetase to kill the cell by charging the wrong tRNA or not recognizing the native tRNAs. In the context of this specific system, orthogonality and equivalence represent two extremes of how a biomolecule will interact with others in the engineered cell. An equivalent synthetase would have the same set of interactions with the native species, and an orthogonal synthetase would have no interactions with the native species. Equivalence is a clean concept. One biomolecule could have exactly the same set of interactions as another. Orthogonality is a little thornier. Nothing in the cell is orthogonal to anything else. All the proteins are made of amino acids and all the RNAs are made of ribonucleotides. These precursors are tied into primary metabolism and regulation. Also, one would still expect anything that looked like a tRNA to interact with the ribosome, EFTU, and so forth. So it is clearly not the case that this term orthogonal refers to the absolute case that there are no interactions. It's more subtle. More typically, what people mean by orthogonal is that amongst a specific subset of analogous interactions in the cell, the introduced biomolecule will not interact or interfere with that endogenous subset. In the case of the orthogonal synthetase, they mean that it doesn't do amino acylation to anything but its own tRNAs. There is no guarantee in the claim that the synthetase won't participate in protein-protein interactions with an unrelated transcription factor and thereby interfere with gene regulation. The claim is restricted to a subset of related interactions. Consider we have two biomolecules, A and B, that have some non-covalent interaction with one another. A and B could be a synthetase and a tRNA, as we have described already and shown top right. It could be the interaction between a small molecule, such as a cofactor, as illustrated by the heme binding protein top left, or it could be the interaction between a DNA sequence and a protein, or the interaction of two proteins. Orthogonality deals with the cross-reactions between a subset of highly similar molecules. For example, we might be speaking of the interaction with the heme binding protein and other porphyrins, or the binding of an antibody to different peptides. Let's consider the example of the tRNA in synthesis again. Suppose I have three tRNAs, A1, A2, and A3, and three synthetases, B1, B2, and B3. 
We would say that this set of A's is orthogonal to one another by virtue of the fact that they do not cross-react with their cognate B's. Orthogonal parts like this are desirable for scenarios in which you don't want your introduced genes to cross-react with related processes in the cell. Equivalent parts are also useful. Consider that we have three types of species, A, B, and C. If a specific sequence of A, A1, interacts with a specific B1, and B2 interacts with C2, then we would not immediately assume that putting all three into the same cell would cause anything new to happen. However, if B1 and B2 are functionally equivalent in some way, then there is a new network of interactions that results by putting them in combination. If we consider the case of metabolic engineering, then we can discuss the orthogonality and equivalence of chemical intermediates in the cell. Suppose that A is an intermediate such as charismic acid. The species of cytoplasmic charismic acid is defined by the equivalence of their covalent structure in the microstates that molecule can exist in. The conformational states accessible to any one molecule of charismic acid are the same as any other and any position within the cytoplasm is equally accessible by any other. The molecules are thus all equivalent within the cell, and that, is, and that is how we define them as a distinct species. One way of disrupting this equivalence is through compartmentalization. For example, we could put A inside an organelle, and thereby restrict the location and accessibility of the molecule. Now we have a new species, that is organellar A, that is not equivalent to cytoplasmic A. We could also have a complex of A. Though A presumably can still dissociate and access the same states as free A, that bound state would participate in its own set of interactions and is thus a distinct species. In the context of metabolic engineering, we have made a major distinction between the monofunctional enzymes and polymeric, me polymeric megasynthases because of the major difference in design caused by the complexation of the substrate to the enzyme in the latter case. When the enzyme just lets go of the product, all molecules within that structure become equivalent, and thus the effect of putting enzymes together in combination is predictable. In the megasynthase case, one cannot make any assumptions about equivalence of the chemical intermediates themselves because they are no longer equivalent due to their participation in a complex. The concept of equivalent or orthogonal biomolecules can also be applied to sets of biomolecules. Here we see two different routes for catabolism of xylose. In pathway A, xylose is transported, then reduced, reoxidized, and then phosphorylated to get the product. In pathway B, xylose is transported, then phosphorylated directly. Both routes have the general effect of inputting extracellular xylose and outputting cytoplasmic xylulose 5-phosphate. From a design perspective, these sets of enzymes are equivalent in the sense that you could use either one to achieve the desired effect of incorporating xylose into metabolism. Similarly, we can speak of orthogonal pathways. For example, we can orthogonalize a biosynthetic pathway by localizing the entire path to an organelle. Here folks move the Atsumi pathway from the cytoplasm to a mitochondrion. In this way, all the intermediates and enzymes are now distinct species from their cytoplasmic counterparts. These strategies have the desired effect of preventing unwanted interactions in the cell that can cause toxicity and loss of flux.